we now look at some work on radians and degrees. Now 2 pi, 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. So in other words, when we talk about a full circle, we're talking about 2 pi radians. And that will simplify to that pi would equal 180 degrees. So initially we're just going to change from radians to degrees. So if we have 4 pi over 5 radians, well that is really equal to 4 fifths times pi, 4 fifths of pi. And if pi is 180 degrees, then we can say that's really 4 fifths times 180 degrees, which works out to be 144 degrees. Now if we're asked to change from degrees to radians, let's see how that's, this works. We're starting off with 135 degrees. We can write this as 135 over 180 times pi. That's the fraction of pi it is. That's a fraction of 180 degrees it is. And when we work that out, it works out to be 3 quarters of pi. So we write that as 3 pi over 4. 330 degrees. Well, the first step, we write it as a fraction over 180 degrees and then we multiply by pi. And that fraction is 1 and 5 6 times pi. But generally, we won't write 1 and 5 6 pi. Generally, what we'll do now, if you press the shift ABC button, the shift fraction button, you'll find that that fraction becomes a improper fraction, becomes 11 over 6. So then we can write that as 11 pi over 6. Excellent. Well, that's just a little bit of quick work there, converting from radians to degrees and vice versa. We'll have a now look at solving some trig equations, this time involving radians. So we're asked to solve 2 cos x equals to negative square root 3 for x between 0 and 2 pi. So 2 pi, remember, is 360 degrees. So in other words, we're getting the full revolution. So initially, though, we need to get rid of that 2 by dividing. So we get cos x equals minus root 3 all over 2. And there's our all stations to central. All stations to central. We needed the full revolution. Now, cos is negative. And this question, cos is negative, well, from the diagram there, that, that shaded section, that's where cos is, in fact, positive. The first and fourth quadrant, cos is positive. If we want cos to be negative, then we'll tick the other two quadrants. So on the calculator then, if we put the root 3 over 2, root 3 on 2, and we take the shift cos, the inverse cos of it, what we end up getting, we're going to leave it in degrees at this stage, we end up getting 30 degrees. So on our diagram, we're actually going to mark it in as degrees. So 30 degrees in the second quadrant, and 30 degrees in the third quadrant. Remember, make sure that you mark in your, your angle with the horizontal. So from zero degrees, we want that uh, first angle there. Well, that's 180 degrees less 30. There's 180, but if we go back 30, we get 150 degrees. The next angle we want is further on from the 180. In fact, it's 180 degrees plus another 30, 210 degrees. So there we have it. There are two answers in degrees, but notice the question is telling us to find x between 0 and 2 pi. In other words, we need to answer in terms of radians. So the 150 degrees, putting that as a fraction over 180 and converting, we end up getting that x equals 5 pi on 6. In other words, 5 6 of pi. And the 210, We'll put the 210 over 180 to get the fraction of pi, and we'd end up getting 7 pi over 6. So we can see then that solving that trig equation is exactly the same as the method we, we've learnt using degrees, except that the final step needs to convert our degree answers to radians. We'll look at one more. We're asked to solve 10x equals the square root of 3. Again, our x values are between 0 and 2 pi. So again, we're doing the full circle and our answer needs to be in radians eventually. So there's our all stations to central. We're saying tan x is, is root 3. In other words, tan is positive. So tan is positive in those two quadrants. So we're going to tick those. 
So on the calculator, we'll put our root 3. We then, because we're using the tan, we're finding the angle there, we must press Shift Tan. We end up with 60 degrees. So we mark 60 degrees in the first and the third quadrant. Very good. So starting from 0, our first answer will in fact just simply be 60 degrees. So x is 60. And in our second answer, well again, from 180 we're going another 60 degrees takes us up to 240 degrees. So there's our answer in degrees. We need though to answer in radians. So the 60 degrees as a fraction of 180 is a third. So we'd write that x equals pi on 3. In other words, a third of pi. And the 240 degrees, okay, again, put it over 180. So 240 over 180 will simplify to be 4 thirds. So we'll have 4 pi over 3. And that concludes our lesson on radian measure.